The grace and grandeur of a turbine-powered aircraft is like no other. There is excitement and the thrill of hearing a jet engine wind up on the stars so full of promise of speed and range, thanks to, among many, their fueling system. Turbine-powered aircraft have a wide vertical operating range that spans from sea level to 45,000 feet. This encompasses drastic temperature and pressure changes for which its fuel system must continually and automatically adjust. The fuel system of an aircraft has four main portions, the storage, the engine, cockpit control, and information display. Aircraft store fuel on board their integral, rigid, or flexible fuel tanks to supply engines in the APU. Rigid tanks are mostly in use on small general aviation aircraft, whereas the flexible or bladder type tanks are common to small, high-performance airplanes including military planes and some turboprops. Integral fuel tanks are sealed into large turbine engine aircraft wings such as the airliners. The system is also called the wet wing. Gas turbine aircraft tanks are located into their wings, center section and at times in the horizontal stabilizers. A little or no extra weight added, a typical wet wing and center tanks would have their booster pumps that will pressurize the non-return lines with fuel to pass to the engine via the low pressure fuel system. In addition, they will have the tank baffles and the check valves to minimize fuel surge from unusual maneuvers. Surge tanks, measurement gauges, sump drain, low pressure cutoff valves, vents, and high and low level floats also form part of a typical system. The floats are important. The high level float will keep a small gap between the tank top and fuel level to keep the fuel pressurized, whereas the low level float will prevent fuel from being dumped beyond the minimum level. Wing tank fuel load also helps prevent wing flutter. In fact, the minimum fuel that must be carried into the wing tanks is determined by wing flutter travel limit. The system incorporates crossfeed valve to even out fuel imbalance in event of engine failure. The engine receives fuel from tanks where it is fed to the combustion chamber. The fuel control unit, which is basically a very expensive density altitude computer, determines just the right amount of fuel given ambient condition for combustion. Older model FCUs, such as the hydromechanical electronic control time units, however, are now redundant and have been replaced by the full authority digital engine control or the fading type FCUs. Gas turbine planes operate in the region of very cold temperatures, hence the onboard fuel ingredient such as water runs the risk of freezing and forming ice crystal in the tanks. That is why certain additives like the fuel system ice inhibitor are added to fuel to prevent ice crystals from forming in the tanks. In addition, we have the fuel oil heat exchangers that while cooling engine oil is also used to warm the fuel. The cockpit fuel control and displays in a modern gas turbine transport aircraft have come of age. The ECAM or the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System will display the fuel system status to the pilots, whereas the fuel control inputs are given on the overhead panel. The refueling panel is given on the outside of the aircraft, whereas the refueling coupling are given on either side of each wing. A typical cockpit digital information system for fuel will display the fuel on board shown in mass units like pounds or the kgs. Further up the system will display fuel quantity in each tank and its temperature, fuel pumps, the crossfeed valves, and the fuel lines toward the engines. The one and two engines and the fuel each tank has used since start. Also shown are barriers between tanks. The overhead fuel panel has wing tank pump switches. We also have push button switches for center tanks as well as the switch for the crossfeed valve and the mode selector switch for manual and auto selection. There will be variations in engine fuel system found in the many different type of planes powered by gas turbine engine. However, the main operating principles remain the same across various platforms. It is important that you fully understand the basic principles and use that as a stepping stone to gain greater understanding of the gas turbine engine fuel system. Uh, my name is Mohammed Boudou. Today we're going to discuss the turbine fuel system training panel. Uh, as usual, before uh, we start, we do as a pre-flight check 
we have to check all the uh, components on the panel, including the lines and the wiring, and also the main power cable. Uh, this to, 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 to do inspection, to make sure everything is safe, and then we'll start our check. The, the second one is, we're gonna talk about the components in this panel, and these components start with the control panel. As you see the control panel, at the top you have four gates, fuel flow, fuel pressure, main fuel quantity, and wind fuel quantity. The next one is these lights. As you see these lights, we have ma the light for the master, and then we have a no fuel uh, light, and also a transfer pump light. Next we have the other row here is, we have a switch. This, 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 uh, these switches are, all of them are different. The first one is the master switch, and then we have the transfer switch, which is we do a test. When we test if it's the pump is transferring, the light will be off. If the light on, it means there is no fuel is transferring. And then you have a green light for the transfer light pump when the pump is on. Then you have a switch for the push pump. And next one is for the shut off valve with close, with this an open and off position only. And then you have the last one is you have the inverter switch that the, turns the inverter to power the, the, the fuel flow transmitter. And here we see we have a CVs. All these CV, CVs are associated with the upper switch at the top. Next one here, we come to the wing tank. This wing tank, as you see, it has a window and this window is very clear that you can see the components inside, as well as uh, uh, inside you have a, a pump, a transfer pump, and you have also a capacitor quantity uh, transmitter. This capacitor quantity transmitter, most of the modern aircraft we use in the capacitor and the resistor are the same. But the, the transfer pump, it is an, uh, a centrifugal pump, which has an impeller. This centrifugal pump, what it do is moves the fuel from the wing tank to the main tank, and then also it separates the vapor by the by the function of the centrifugal uh, uh, impeller. Next, here we got the main fuel tank. The main fuel tank it has a capacitor. Uh, sorry, it is, has a resistor fuel quantity transmitter, and also it has a flow floater valve. When the fuel is transferred to the main fuel tank and it reaches the max level, the floater valve will close the line. In case if it fails to close, then the micro switch will turn the, the transfer pump off. Underneath of the main fuel tank, here we have a push pump. The push pump is a vein type, and this push pump, it, uh, it, is, it controls also and regulates the pressure to the system. And uh, by, by, the, by the pump, the push pump, we have a relief valve, and this relief valve will help to relieve if it is a build, there is a build up pressure around the, the pump to save the pump also, it, what you do is it cycles the fuel. When cycles the fuel, it cools the pump, it lubricates the pump as well, and also uh, relieves the pump. Next to it is we have a fire uh, shut off valve. This is the fire wall. The shut off valve is only open and close, which is between the pump and the strainer to cut off any fuel going to the compassion chamber or let it go, which is same like a gate. And then at the top of it, you can see the, tra the, the transfer pressure switch. This pressure switch will help out in case of, in case of the fuel and the, the quantity of the fuel in the wind tank drops, then the switch will turn the pump off to avoid burning it out. Here you have the strainer. 
the strainer actually it cleans up the fuel from all the contaminations and also uh, we we uh, we we have a, an element inside we check it if there is any contamination or air problem inside to clean it or to change it next to it the next component is the fuel transmitter this fuel transmitter will uh, will transmit the fuel from the strainer all the way to the fuel control unit it is it is a one type whenever the quantity of the fuel is uh, increases what will happen is the van will move and that van what it do is it, uh, it energizes a coil which gives you the reading here at the top of the panel in, the, in that uh, fuel transmitter gauge next we have here is a fuel control unit the fuel control unit it is located by the engine and then it is connected to a lever this power lever is located in the cockpit. This power lever is controlled by the captain to increase or decrease his thrust according to the requirement of his flight. And the, the, what it do is the fuel will go right there to the compression chamber. As you see, this is uh, a simulated compression chamber and clear you can see when the fuel is coming down and it has also and uh, nozzles at the top of it. All right, so this is about the components and then we'll talk about how to operate this uh, training panel. All right, so here what we do is, we make sure here our switch is on, which is the main one, and then for the whole uh, panel, and then we put the master switch on. As you see, we have a green light, it means now the control panel is uh, energized. Energized means we check here the transfer uh, test. As you see here, there is no light. It means there is nothing going on. All right. Now we're gonna transfer. Here is a transfer pump. I'm gonna put the transfer valve. As you see, we start transferring the pump. First of all, we transfer. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn the drums 
hacer Pampo Ok, ahora I, trans, I turn the transfer pump off and as you see now, we maximize it here in the main fuel tank. Now, we have to operate the push pump. As you see now, the fuel is coming down here. It goes through the pump. This push pump, it is an electric operated motor and also it is online pressure regulator. What it do is the fuel coming down here, it goes through the shallow part and then it goes to the fuel strainer, clean it up, and then it goes to the fuel transmitter. The fuel transmitter, what it do for you the reading? See now it depends on the all of the sea. You see here, and this is the fuel now uh, the pressure we have. As you see here, the movement of the throttle uh, it matters to the pump. Now the fuel is coming to the to the combustion chamber, a simulated combustion chamber, you can see that the, the, the end of the nozzle is, it is strained on the, on the combustion chamber. This is the time you increase or you decrease your uh, throttle. And this will be controlled only and only by the throttle of the captain. Right? So, this is about uh, the, 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 how it works. And, uh, just what I would like to increase this, you see, now the pump, the, the pump is working. If you pull the CV for the, 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 the pump, as you see, it will cut, it should cut off. All right, so I turn off the, the push pump switch off, and you, and you can see now the reading, the full pressure will start dropping. Okay, now you see the quantity of the main fuel tank and you can see also the wing tank, uh, how it is. The fuel flow, now it went to zero because there is no more fuel flow flowing through the system. Okay, this is about it concerning this panel, guys. And uh, if you want to go further, you can read the manual. And uh, thank you very much for today. We'll see you soon. Good day.